morning and welcome to River City. My name is Summer and I'd like to take a few minutes to let you know what's new and happening here at River City. If this is your first time worshiping with us today, welcome. We are so glad you chose to worship with River City. You can head on over to our website, myrivercity.church and click on the I'm New tab, or you can head on over to the Info Hub following service. We can't wait to meet you. <laughs> 21 Days of Prayer starts today. Also, we will be meeting throughout the week starting tomorrow at 6 a.m. and on Saturdays at 9 a.m. We hope you get involved for this great, amazing time of prayer and worship. This is Kristen. This is Kagan. We just wanted to invite just every student to Current Youth. It is going to be every Wednesday from 7 to 8.30, and we'd love to have you guys there. Kagan's going to tell you a little bit more about it. Yes, so at Current Youth, we push a fun and safe environment. We wanting to get the kids involved in learning about Jesus, and we want to give them a safe community to where they can give somebody else that's their age and if not older with some of our leaders that to where they can speak to some of us about the things that they're going on in their life. Yeah. We'd love to see you all there. Marriage Weekend is happening next month, February 9th and 10th. Make sure to sign up and get involved. You don't want to miss. Thanks for choosing to worship with us today. Remember, you can stay connected throughout the week on our social media. Now let's stand and give the Lord a hand clap of praise. been good to you. Look, can we give him a shout out for a second? Awesome. Man, it's a beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. I woke up this morning and we were getting ready. I say we, I was the only one in the house awake getting ready. But as I was getting ready, I started thinking back to when we used to do two services and, and what went on and and uh, we, we tell everyone, I was telling our worship team earlier, our, our second service is more full and it's wild and it's all that. I said, but what's beautiful about the 9 a.m. service, you will come to love it. And here's why, because you don't have to sell anybody on it. They already bought it. There's a lot of seasoned people in this room this morning, and I know it, and I appreciate you. Give yourself a hand for coming in this morning. Thank you for coming to church this morning. Hey, if it's your first time with us at River City, it's great to have you at River City. Can we give those? We actually have some first-timers today. You guys can be seated. We have a lot of stuff coming up tomorrow morning. It's a big morning. Today really is kind of the first, is the first of, uh, the first day of 21 days of prayer. And tomorrow morning we start Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. for the next three weeks. It's 6 a.m. Monday through Friday. We'll be right here praying from 6 to 7. And we'll have you out of here by about 6.55 to 7 o'clock. We're pretty good at it. And the reason we're pretty good at it is because we join another church, uh, really thousands of churches all over the world that pray together at the same time. And uh, that service is only 55 minutes. So we can guarantee you we're going to have you out of here on time. So don't miss that opportunity to be a part of that. We have small groups coming up in February. We'll launch a new semester, also along with Logos in this next semester. And also you heard them talk about it next month. If you're married, all ages, Everybody say, all ages. All ages. It doesn't matter. I, I, we had some people say, is that for young couples? Is that for young men? No, it's for all ages. Our marriage week is our third annual marriage weekend. You don't want to miss it. Uh, the the, the Lejeunes from uh, Jennings, Louisiana, they come in, and they've been doing this for us, for, and this will be the third year. And if you've been blessed by marriage weekend and you're here today, can we, can we hear you real quick? There you go. People have been... People's lives have been affected by it. We've had people tell us after it was over with, you have no idea how crucial it was that I was a part of, of this marriage weekend for my, for my marriage. We were in a rough place and we walked away realizing, you know, it's not so bad, we're doing okay. And so I want to encourage you to get involved 
in that this year. And so, man, we're pumped about it. It's going to be a great year coming in. So last night I was getting ready for my message, and I was, I was what, what am I going to speak? And obviously I've been thinking this over for about a month now or even longer than that. What, God, what is the word that you want to speak to our church, oh, kind of the keynote word for our church as we enter in, and this is the other thing, we are now 100 years old, River City. Come on, man. That's pretty exciting right there. 100 years old. And God, we, we've gone through times. This church has been sustained. And it's, it's never just been a huge church. But God has, we've gone through times of increase and times where God has separated some wheat from some from some shap. We know how that goes, right? We, we've seen those types of things go on the weeds and the, God had to do some weeds and sometimes. But I really feel like we're in a time where we're entering into the reason that God has sustained us for 100 years. And I want to encourage you today to lean in to this year. And now, I, the word perseverance, look at your neighbor and say perseverance. I, I, did, I couldn't shake it, but, but then at the same time for the last month, I felt like, no, I don't want people to think that we're just hunkering down. I think God is, God, God is ready to do something. It's time to not hunker down anymore. Come on. Somebody, somebody here, you've hunkered down long enough. You've been hiding from things long enough. You've been saying maybe next year long enough. And I'm going to tell you, Cody, you better start that 40-minute timer because if you don't, my friend, I will preach until 11 o'clock. Because this is a subject that really, really, I really feel this morning. And as I was getting ready, a word hit me, and I went to, God works that way with me, probably because I'm ADHD, and I have a billion thoughts on things. I write a bunch of stuff down, and it doesn't, uh, anybody else wave at me if you know what I'm talking about. We got the ADHD people there. That's the ads, okay? We don't have AIDS, we have ads, and that's what we have. And so a lot of us, like, we, we, have, the, we have the tendency, like, we'll, we'll have a billion thoughts and we can't bring them all together, but God, it's something about it, he brings it all together right there on Saturday nights. It never fails when I can't get it all together. He brings it all together on Saturday night, and he's like, this is what I want you to say. You shut your mouth. Wait, what? You, better way to say You shut your brain up for a minute and let me speak. And today I want... To come to you with a simple concept, it's time. Look at your neighbor and say, it's time. And I know this is the 9 a.m. service, and I know this is the service where everybody's still wiping sleep out of your eye. Some of y'all, though, wave your hand if you were up at 5 a.m. this morning. Let me see y'all. That's, that's the true early birds. We got any 4 o'clockers that were up this morning? 4 o'clock. Whew. Any 3 o'clockers? We, oh, we had a 3 o'clock row. We had two three, two, three a.m. people. They say that those are successful people. They say there's something about the 4 a.m. people. So I appreciate it. And I know it's, it's easy for us to come in at 9 a.m. and kind of sit back. But this morning, I want to encourage you, it's not time to sit back on our heels. It's time to lean forward on our toes. Anybody with me this morning? It's time to lean forward. We can sit here for the next year and talk about how God has sustained us for a hundred years. Little old me. But I want to remind you this morning, I believe in the prophetic. I believe in the gifts of the Spirit still moving. And a word was spoken to this church last year. It's time to get off the low road and it's time to take the highway. It's time to get out of a small town mentality and get into a big city mentality. We're not river town, we're river city. Come on, is there somebody with me this morning that realizes it's time to move forward to more? And so this morning, I want to read to you my opening text is Luke chapter 9, and I'm using the message version. It's a paraphrase, and I know that, and I know some people get weird about that, but I want to read this paraphrase of this passage to you. It says, on the road, someone asked if he could go along. Uh, on the road, uh, someone asked if he could go along. He said, I'll go with you wherever. And Jesus was curt. Jesus answers back, and he says, are you ready to rough it? Well, Chris, you just said that this it's time, and then you said, you're going to read us this scripture? It's time to rough it? Good. Yeah. Jesus answered him back. He said, are you ready to rough it? He goes on, and he says, we're not staying in the best motels or hotels. I guess what we'd say there is we're not staying in hotels. We're staying in motels. Matter of fact, we ain't even staying in a motel half the time. We're going to be sleeping under a tree. Anybody here ever stayed in a motel before? Some of y'all, some of y'all, y'all, man, y'all have had it great in life. You've only stayed in hotels. 
You had the, you went inside and you did the, uh, I'll never forget one time we were on vacation. I, I think I mentioned this a few weeks ago maybe, but, but we stopped somewhere out near White, I think it was near White Sands, uh, New Mexico, and we were out there in a bad, bad sand and, 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 and wind storms, rain. It was just insane. And it was my wife, uh, myself, my parents, and we were on a little, it was one of her first family vacations with us. And Jamie would, had not stayed in very many motels in her life. She had mostly stayed in hotels throughout her life. Well, she got a good welcome to the Nelson family. Because we are not afraid to stay in a motel if it's cheap enough. Right? Are there bugs? You don't walk in and say, do y'all have a bug problem? We know there's going to be a bug problem. Right? We just, the question is, are we taking them home with us? That, that's, what, that's what determines whether or not we stay at this one. We can handle getting bit a little bit. But in this case, we, we found a little motel, and it was the only one in this little town. I can't remember the name of the little town out there. It was on the west side of some... Where we're at? Capitan. Ca- Capitan? Capitan, New Mexico. Somewhere like that. And so it's a small little town, and, I, I, and we got some folks from New Mexico here. Y'all, y'all know about that. And so we... We, we got out, and Dad tried, to, tried it, and he said, we got one room left, one room left. And we got into that motel. And as we got our clothes unpacked and, and settled in, we come to realize that the door to this motel room did not lock. Now, I know, like, some people are afraid, and I'm about to tell on myself, but luckily we, we're not recording this service on video So I'm going to speak plain to you, all right? When my family goes on vacation, unless we're entering the state of California, we are defendable, if that makes sense. We, We don't just take one. We take one per person, if you know what I mean. Everybody has a firearm in the car when we go on vacation. Why? Because, and somebody said, well, some states are not okay. Well, let me tell you something. You can play around with that, but I'll do my 25 years if I have to to defend myself. I ain't dying like that. And that's kind of how, and I'll never forget, we all unloaded the guns, and Dad said, I tell you what, tonight is a good night to have guns. Because this is a sketchy little town, and the door won't lock. And I remember we went old school on it. We watched enough westerns to know what to do when the door won't lock. What do you do? You get you a chair and you shimmy that thing in there. And I'll never forget that night we slept. We actually had a shotgun on that trip with us, a fold-over shotgun. I, there's an a, uh, uh, officer, Fatu Amua's in the room right now. He probably is like, this is, I don't know, guys, I don't know if that was legal. But Fatu, I'm telling you, I'll do the 25. But anyways, my family ain't going down like that, all right? And so we, we got tucked in. We tucked in, snuggled in good. It, it, well, all you should have done is pray. We did pray as we held on to that gun. And I remember we woke up the next morning. It was sunshine and that storm had passed through. And, and we got up and we went to eat. And, and, and we quickly realized it's a good thing that we did do what we did because this is an unsavory town. <laughs> but the food was good and greasy. <laughs> Well, what are you talking about? See, a lot of us, we, we don't know what it's like to rough it and be in tough situations. Denzel and I, we, we've been in some places. We've stayed in some funny spots, haven't we? Uh, I'm not going to get into it deep, but we've been on missions trips where we've stayed in some places. See, when God calls you out to do things, He'll call you to some uncomfortable places. And see, all we want to focus on is everything wrong in the world right now. God's looking at you going, yeah, are you focused on that or are you focused on what I'm doing? Because I'm doing something right in the middle of all of this. The enemy has not won. But we live in a time where it feels like we're a little bit under siege. If you flip on the TV and you watch TV for a minute, it feels like the devil is everywhere. Let me tell you what, the devil has not won. The devil is not winning. I I want to clarify something. A lot of us think, well, eventually God's going to come in and have the victory. No, 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 no. God is already victorious over everything. Come on. You have the power of the Holy Ghost moving in your life. So Jesus, he said, follow me. He said, we're not going to be staying in the best places. He said, he said, certainly, but first, excuse me. This man answers Jesus back. Excuse me for a couple days. He said, I have to make arrangements 
for my father's funeral. That's understandable. Now, many of us in the room, we would say, yeah, that makes sense. We'll give you a couple days. But that's not what Jesus said. Jesus refused. He said, your business is life, not death, and life is urgent. And he says, announce God's kingdom. He said, I'm here to announce life. He's telling him, basically, forget your father's funeral, follow me. Now, I, I, a lot of us, we, we, we have this tendency these days, especially in church, like we have learned how to do things very polished, right? We've learned, and, and here we're not as polished as a lot of churches you go to, probably, but we've learned how to say things the right way, right? We don't say th- words like submit. It got quiet in here when I said that. There was a wife that looked at a husband and went, mm And there was a husband that looked right back and went, "Mm mm-hmm. We don't say those words, right? We we don't talk about we don't talk about perseverance enough. We don't talk about dealing with hard times and keeping a smile on our face through it. We all want to, we want the God's gonna make everything better and my life's gonna be happy. Let me tell you something. God, oh man, God is less worried about your happiness and he's more worried about your righteousness. I know that's, that's not a popular, where we're, we're looking, see we do this to everything, we do this to our spouses, we, it's your job to make me happy, it's not their job to make you happy. And we do it to God, we look at him, we say, God you didn't do the things the way I thought you should have done it, you should have done it this way, but you didn't and now I'm, I'm mad, at, people get mad at God for anything and everything sometimes, because we've turned into a society where we're looking for, so, for a place to point a finger. This past week, my mom and we were talking, and she felt so bad. I'm, I'm going to share this with you. She felt so bad because this past week, my entire family has had the flu except for me. I just had strep throat. <laughs> so it's been quite a week, hasn't it? Been, been kind of fun. And she said, Chris, I'm so sorry. I said, Mom. It's not your fault. Well, I know I'm the one that gave it. Mom, you're not going to run from it. The flu is everywhere right now. I'm not blaming you for the whole family being sick. My God, we've spent so much time together this week that we're sick of each other. My poor babies, they have coughed all week. They've had a rough week. And in the yesterday, uh, a Friday, they started feeling better. So they went out to the ranch and they ran and played for a while. And all that sunlight, I think they're feeling a whole lot better. They needed that sun. They needed that vitamin D, right? Got out there. They took the shoes off. Stepped in some cow patties. Had a good time. With no sh- you know how it goes. They had a good time out there, didn't they? I said, you know, we're, we're always, I told mom, I said, our culture, see, you feel bad about it. Because everybody these days, we're looking for somewhere to point the finger. We take no responsibility of our own. And this morning, here's Jesus. He, he's saying right there. He, I mean, we, we would, why did I say all that? Because we would look at Jesus. If Jesus spoke to us this way in the current times we live in, we would say, well, you didn't have to say it that way. You know, I liked your message, but your delivery was a little harsh. And I think we're in times, I, I, I've hit a point, and there's, there's a frustration. You know, we were talking about this this week, and somebody who's a spiritual uncle to me, Jonathan Suber, pastors at Oasis Church, and also he was talking about it with mom and dad this week, that, that apostolic leadership, uh, spirit-filled leaders are kind of frustrated right now because we're looking around at everything, and even at churches somewhere sometimes, and I'm not picking on other churches, that's not our job, we're going to focus on Jesus. But the fact of the matter is, is there's a lot of lies being perpetuated in the world right now. And it fi- you find yourself being frustrated because you want to speak to things and you want to go after things and you want to speak. Th- but, but you know if you do, somebody's going to say, that was a little harsh. The truth of the matter is, if I want to focus on the negative, there's plenty of negative to focus on. There's plenty of toxic positivity to focus on too. What is toxic positivity? That is where I get to a place where I don't want to hear the truth anymore if the truth hurts. I just want to hear what's comfortable. And that's where Jesus is right here. He's telling him something pretty uncomfortable. He's telling him, don't go to your dad's funeral. Follow me now. So the story goes on. 
Another one said, I'm ready, ready to follow you, Master. But first, excuse me a while while I get things straightened out at home. Another, i got to go home and straighten up some things before I leave. And Jesus said, no procrastination. No procrastination. No backwards looks. He says, you can't put God's kingdom off till tomorrow. Seize the day. There's been so much word spoken over this church over the years. We've, my family, we've been here since 1999. Dad entering this year as senior pastor for 25 years. The longest standing pastor in this church's history. I'm proud of him for that, man. Talk about a guy, he won't stop. This church was caught up. I'm just going to be straight up honest with you for a minute. It was pretty traditional. There were some things, and, and we had to go through some changes, and it was painful changes. But now we find ourselves in a place where I feel like it's time to tell you that it's time to move on. It's time to move on. And what Jesus is telling him here, really, if we apply it to today, a lot of us, we've been talking about something God has promised us for years, and it's always tomorrow, and we always say in the future, I will put whatever you want to add into that, and I realized something the other day, I was, I was laying in bed a, a couple of weeks ago, and I was thinking about something, I said, you know, God, eventually, God's going to work that out, and I thought to myself, Chris, you're 38 years old, it's time to lean in, it's time to realize that the future has hit us right in the face. We're standing. It's no, longer, it's no longer the future. It's right now. I feel like God is ready to do something right now in this church body. He's ready to do something in this city. I feel like you're going to see multiple churches begin to grow by leaps and bounds in this city because the truth is going to go forth. People are going to be filled with the Spirit in these times. So what do I need to move on from? The first thing I need to move on from is old history. See, some of us got some history. Anybody in the room, wave at me. You got some history. I'm going to wave right back at you because guess what? I got some history. There's some things that, that I don't share with just everybody, but some of you know some of that history. But see, we dwell in that history, and we dwell on everything we've done wrong. We're afraid to take a step forward into what God has for us because we think that we cannot sustain those steps in the future. Because why? Because, well, I, I, I've always had this problem. I've always done. Let me tell you something. It's time to move on past history. It's time to move past traditions. It's time to get over things that there, there, there's some things that we've kept around for years that, that probably was, was silly stuff. It was preference. It was not doctrinal issues. And it's time to move on past those things. There's a lot of philosophy in Christianity that people fight about that I can't find anywhere in the Word of God. And it has divided us for years. There's certain words I don't even want to use anymore because I'm tired of those words being trigger warning words, if you know what I mean. If you use those words, somebody gets triggered by those words. Let me tell you something. If Jesus was to step into this room, he would probably trigger every single one of us. And I, I'm going to tell you something. I, I, I'm one of those people, like I played, I played sports when I was younger. I, I didn't like coaches that, that patted me on the back when I did a bad job. No, I like the coach that looked at me and said, hey, buddy, you going to suck it up, or are you going to keep sucking it up like you've been doing right here? Come on. I, I played for some old school coaches. Like somebody said something the other day. He said, that kid called, he, he said something, he said something like stupid or something. I said, stupid is the, you worried about, the coach said stupid. Our coach used to drop cuss words. There you go. Right? He'd, he'd give it to, he'd scream and holler at you. His spit, talking about now everybody's worried about wearing masks for everything. Well, we don't, I don't want, don't spit in my face. Don't get, man, I can't tell you how much of my coach's spit has rested on my face. Someone the other day complained because I want a player ran off the field and the coach grabbed him. But he, 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 like, as he ran up to him, he, did, he just kind of gently grabbed his helmet and he talked to him. He said, that's just ridiculous. You're grabbing those kids', those kids helmets. Our, ki our coaches used to break our neck as you ran by when he grabbed your face mask. But he got your attention. And he told you the truth. 
And I'm going to tell you, I wonder, I wonder if Jesus told us the truth, how uncomfortable it would be. How much stuff are we hanging on to? And God's looking at us going, are you going to let that go or are we going to sit around and, and cry about it? Or are we going to move on? Now, I, I, I know, I, I know, I, this sounds pretty rough this morning, but I think that this crowd, you can handle me this morning. Come on. Isaiah 43, 18 through 19 says, forget the former things, do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. He goes on and says, he's speaking into the future and he's prophesying. He says, now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. I know the news cycle may be saying that there's a bunch of bad stuff coming up. But he said, right here, you see, what, what did he tell his people? He said, I'll make a way in the wilderness. I, I'm going to make streams in the wasteland. In the dry country, I will sustain you. I will take care of you. There was a word that went forth last week. And what did that word, what, what was that word? into this room. It was fear not, I will sustain. Let me simplify. You asked me this week, what was it? I forgot to text you back. I apologize about that. If y'all know me, y'all know that's a common occurrence. I don't know if y'all know this, but some people struggle with something. We read your text and we answer it in our head. And we put the phone down. And then a week later, you text this something else, and we look at it, and we go, oh, my God, I didn't text that. I just thought it. <laughs> but I'll sum it up for you, Brad. Fear not, I will sustain you. In the middle of everything, there's so much fear trying to raise up in the world right now. You need to look fear in the face and say, be gone with you. Get behind me, Satan. Come on. The only thing that, only, 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 only place I see in Scripture that I'm supposed to fear, it's fear God. And that's the beginning of all wisdom. See, if I fear God, I don't have to fear anything else. Fear God and fear nothing else. Come on, there's some people in this room today. You ought to have added, I'm not going to fear it anymore. I'm going to walk into it. So I'm not fearing what's happened to me in the past. I'm not fearing that I'm going to return to that stuff in the past. I'm over it. I'm done with it. There's just some people in the room today that says, I'm just sick and tired of who I was. I'm sick and tired of hanging on to some things that I need to let go. I need to set aside these ways. Come on, where are you at this morning? Or come on, I know it's a little early, but we got to hit a point where we say, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. We need to move on from some old habits. Some of us got habits. Oh, we are habitual about certain things. Some of us got, now there's addictions and then there's habits. What's the difference? Some people just got, it's not, it's not as much of an, well, they're starting to find out some things are, in, is it, what is it, uh, dopamine? Like we, we, we have our, I told my wife the other day, I said, I'm going to do something for the next 21 days and I haven't done it in a couple of years and I used to do it during 21 days of prayer. I'm going to turn off the news and all of my social media for the next three weeks. If I come in here next week, <laughs> y'all, I don't know, man. I don't know. I'm a news junkie. I like to know what's going on. I like to be in the know. Anybody in the room here? Y'all know what I'm talking about? I listen to all kinds of news. Left wing, right wing, chicken wings. I mean, I don't care. I, I listen. If, it, if it's out there, and I want to hear it. I want to hear what you're arguing about. I want to know what that guy said. I want to know what this guy said. Most of them, I've come to a point where I just went... Y'all liars, 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 and liars. <laughs> but I want to turn it off for a minute because, and I want to encourage you, church, it's time to turn some things down. For Turn the volume down of the world and turn up the volume of heaven for a minute and say, God, what are you saying in the middle of all this right now? <laughs> Isaiah 58, 6 says, Is this not the fast that I've chosen to loose the bonds of wickedness? to undo the heavy burdens, to let the oppressed go free, and that you break every yoke. How many things have bound us in our minds? And it's not even, see, we always talk about this stuff. We're talking about drugs. We're talking about alcohol. We're talking about, about nicotine addictions and all these types of things. I, I'm going to throw one at you pretty fun. The other day I was talking to my doctor about something. I was, I'm worried because, you know, uh, Alzheimer's kind of runs in our family, and I know it starts in your 30s, and I'm really bothered by it. And I, I thought it was interesting when he looked at me, and he said, you know what you can do to slow Alzheimer, Alzheimer's? And they're, we're starting to find out. I said, what's that? He said, nicotine. What? He said, yeah, nicotine. 
I said, now, Doc, this is the first time I've had a, doc, had a doctor tell me I need to smoke cigarettes. I said, but I'm listening. Because <laughs> I used to smoke cigarettes. <laughs> he said, no. He said, you don't need to smoke cigarettes. That'll kill you on the long side, right? He said, no, there, there's other ways of obtaining it. And it blew my mind. It's something that we've always, it, it's a, it's a, it's a we, we gotta, I'm addicted to that. Well, how many of you people in this room right now are addicted to caffeine? <laughs> But the second a fella comes in and he's got some yellow stained fingers, we need to pray God delivers him with <laughs> that nicotine. It got kind of quiet. It's kind of kind of everybody's kind of. Hey, 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 I don't know about that. It's true though. It's true though. We pick and choose. But the fact of the matter is, is there's some things in our lives that are holding us back. There's some stuff we watch. Some stuff we listen to. I was listening to something the other day I thought was totally safe. And I went, whoa, what in the world? And I rewound back a little bit and played it again and went, what did he just say? There's so much, there's so much Satan, <laughs> there's so much satanic. And when I was a youth pastor, I was, I was wild. Y'all wouldn't have wanted your kids in the youth group because they'd have come home and burned all your CDs up. You know what I'm talking about? Because like, they, they were, am I, am I right or am I right? Like, we, we had a CD burning one time where we, man, we, I, I, I didn't think it through very good because plastic doesn't really burn up, it just melts into the bottom of the trash can. Uh, and then we stood around as it burned all that black smoke into the air, and now I thought about it, it's like, how many of us are going to have lung cancer from that one CD burning we did that one time? But God, that'll get us into heaven, Amen. <laughs> But no, we, we were serious about it. Why? Because we went through a time of just cleansing. We cleanse things out of the way. We move things out of the way. Why? Because God, we want to hear you. And the world is so loud right now. But God, we thought it was loud then, Caleb. We had no idea how loud it was really going to get. The world is getting so loud that it feels like it's all you can hear is all the, all the, oh, God. We're, con we're almost convinced that the enemy has already won it all. And I want to tell you something, that God is winning right in the middle of everything that we're seeing going on right now. All this, we, we, one of our men just climbed on an airplane and flew over the Middle East to carry the good news, the word, the, the gospel over to the Jewish people. That's right. To the, is, that, is that why? I'm so excited to know that we have somebody in our church that has a heart for the Jewish people right in the middle of all this going on right now. And I know that's politically incorrect to say right now. But it's so, we live in exciting times. In the middle of everything, God's wanting to break some things in our life, but we got to let it happen. we got to move on from old habits. The next thing we got to move on from is old hurts. It's time to move on from old hurts. See, bitterness is a funny thing. You think, you think that you're getting back at somebody else when you're bitter and you're angry toward them and you you got an attitude, but you're the one at the end of the day that is in chains. You're the one that's in bondage when you let bitterness set into your heart. And I'm going to tell you something, as time goes on, if you keep holding grudges, the Bible kind of implies that we might not make it through the gates of heaven if we have grudges and alt in our heart toward a brother. So it's time to move on from those things. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 through 19 says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. I realize sometimes I've thought about it. I don't want to become a church that's, that's so, we, we always say the, the term, and I, I, I still believe this, we'll do anything short of sin to reach the lost. But I don't want to become a church where it's comfortable to stay in sin and stay on the pew every Sunday morning. Why? Because we're supposed to be a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Now all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. He says, and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. See, God, you see, a lot, we, we like the mark and the void. We, we love to use those, right? Do you, do you know the, the mark, and you've heard me preach this a billion times. I'm going to say it again, though. The mark in a void is not to mark those who, who, who don't necessarily live the way I think they ought to live. Who mark those who, who I, you know, I don't like the way they do things. I don't like their person. No, no, no. It's those who sow discord. How many of us would be marked and avoided in the New Testament church of the Bible if we continue on in our own actions today? 
And so he says this, he says, reconcil- he's, he has given us the ministry of reconciliation, not discord, not, not sowing discord and division, no, reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. And this morning I want to tell you I can't start the next chapter of my life if I keep rereading the last one. There is a reason that the windshield is about 50 times the size of your rearview mirror. You check what's behind you. You check where you've been, but you don't stay focused on it. I can't remember, was it Mario Andretti or somebody like that climbed in a car one time and he was going to be running and he popped the rearview mirror out and tossed it out. He said, why in the world would you do that? I, I, I'll have to look that story up. I can't remember exactly who it was. It was a race car driver. He said, because I'm not going backwards. I'm going forwards. So a lot of us need to pull the rearview mirror off in the times that we're in and forget about what's been done to you, about what, what, what's been said to you, what's been said about you. You know, a lot of people talk about that. They lied about me. You know, there's been some people tell the truth about me too. <laughs> There's been some things that people have said about me that was true, but that's not who I am anymore. And it's time to forget what they said and the truth that they did speak because God has made me a new creation. Come on, I made brand spanking new. I'm born again. So it's time to make the change. And I'm going to wrap up very quickly in the next 10 minutes. Matthew 4, 17 says this, From that time on, Jesus began to preach, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Now, I, I, a lot of us, you know, we, 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 we grew up, some of us in this room, we grew up in the old school, Brush Harbor preacher types of preaching, the Pentecostals. I mean, some of the Baptists were the old school Baptists, and, and they, would write, they would get with it. And I feel so weird reading this scripture and just saying, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. When I hear, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. It's like it's not, that's not how it should be, should be spoken, is it? No, this morning I want to say to the room, repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. Repent for the kingdom of heaven has come near. And I know it's a little hard. It's some of you right now, I'm saying this, you say, I just ain't feeling you, and that's unnecessary. There's going to come a point where it's too late, and in God, the kingdom of heaven has come. He has returned. And I believe people are going to rush to churches, and they're going to be screaming, but it's too late. And that's why this morning I say, repent! We have to repent. It's a time to turn away from this world. To turn to the kingdom of heaven. And I feel, even if i got to preach it to the walls today, if God can make the rocks cry out, He can make these walls cry out. I'll preach it to the walls. we got to repent. we got to turn back. It's time. It's time. It's time. How many times have you heard it's time? But so many of us sit in the room today and we say, I've heard it before, God. I've heard that Jesus is returning since I can remember. My dad has preached, Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. In the 1980s, I remember sitting when when my dad was still just a young preacher in my granddad's church. And I remember my granddad, Cody. Poppy was standing up there and telling, Jesus is coming. You remember, remember the way Poppy preached sometimes? He'd get a hold of God, man. You could tell he'd been in the presence of God because he'd step out and he would he would pre- preach with tears in his eyes. Jesus is coming. And you know what? He may not even see the, ret- the second return of Jesus. He's going to see a second return of Jesus when he's taken from this world. And I believe that. But uh, let me tell you something. He wasn't lying. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. It's not a time to grow cold in it. It's not a time to, to start paying attention to everything else. See, a lot of us are trying to get our ducks in a row. We're trying to, I, I hear people, we're prepping. I, I'm not going to lie. I, I got a little extra water put back, some other stuff put back. You know, we, we don't know what, what times are going to. We, we were talking about deer hunting this year. It's like, man, we need to kill as many deer as we can. They said there's going to be a beef shortage this year, like freaking out a little bit. I think Austin's killed enough for us, though. We're good to go, though, Cody. But anyway. <laughs> But the fact of the matter is, is that that's not what I need, really need to be preparing. I need to be preparing my heart. I need to be preparing my 
spirit. I need to be preparing my soul because the biggest, the biggest thing that's about to happen is God's about to pour out his spirit. And then after he pours out his spirit, it's gonna be, I believe it's going to be a quick revival. It's going to be wild. It's going to, come on, where are the wild things at? Yo, where are the wild things at? I want wild. I want wild. It's going to be wild. It's going to be fast. And then he's going to return. I believe it's going to happen. And you know it's going to be happening right in the middle. If you don't know Jesus, you're going to think everything's falling apart. But if you know Jesus, you're going to be looking to heaven and going, oh, my God, here we go. It's about to happen. We're about to go home. I don't know about y'all, but I'm so ready to go home. I've hit a point where I'm tired of this world. I'm ready to go home. So it's time to get closer to God. Fasting and prayer, this is your perfect opportunity. You can start fasting. I, I used to preach a message on fasting just before we did 21 days of prayer. And the reason I did it was because I wanted to have everybody ready to go. No, how to fast. Guys, it's called Google. Go Google Daniel fast. Do the Daniel fast. Do a total fast if you want to. Water only, have at it. Do y'all know they try to tell you that you'll die if you do a water only fast. Do you know there was a man that actually did a water only fast for a solid year in the 1960s? He didn't, he didn't eat food for a year. His first meal back, he took vitamins, and I think there was a doctor involved in the process, and he lost over 200 and something pounds, about 250 pounds. He's really obese, overweight, and he lost a bunch of weight, and, and they helped him through the process, and, and he actually maintained his weight at about 180 or 195 pounds after it was over. Well, I was listening to this the other day on, on, on the, the uh, truth speaker of our time, <laughs> Joe Rogan. But anyways... <laughs> But his first meal back, I'll never forget what he said. He said his first meal back was a piece of bread and a boiled egg. And his reply was, boy, that boiled egg tasted so good. You know a man has had to fast for a solid year to be so excited about a boiled egg. But he lives. I want to tell you something. Not eating might be pretty good for some of us. I could stand to lose a little bit. But you know what I could really stand is for my flesh to be weakened and for my spirit to hone in to God. That's why I want to do it. It's time. It's time to come close to God. And God will come close to you. Wash your hands. This is James 4. You sinners, purify your hearts. For your loyalty is divided between God and the world. It's come to a point where we've got to make a decision. I know this morning it says, man, you're making that pretty hard. That sounds pretty mean, Chris. That's, it's, you're pretty black and white about it. I, I, I don't know about y'all, but I'm tired of gray. Because gray, like, I can't make a decision on gray. We have so much in it. We, uh, that's nuanced. Well, it's more of a nuanced, nuanced. I, I, here's what I'm going to just go with now. If it's more biblical, let's lean that way. If it's less biblical, let's get away from it. Let's just, let's just come on. Is anybody with me on it? Let's just, let's just make the decision. The line has been drawn. The world has drawn the line. Which side are we going to step on? What are we going to do with it? We have to make a decision. Second thing, it's time for us to tune in. To get in tune with my purpose and passions. Galatians 6, 3-4 says, If anyone thinks that they are something, when they are not, they deceive themselves. Each one should test their own actions. Then they can take pride in themselves alone without comparing themselves to someone else. Quit worrying about everybody else and start worrying about yourself. What do you mean by that? Well, Chris, you told me i got to reach the lost. Yeah, I'm talking about quit getting so bent out of shape over every, what everybody else is doing and focus on what God has called you to do and do what, be the best you that you could be. And I guarantee you, you're going to be a 10 at it every time. Come on, is there somebody here? I'm tired of trying to be somebody else. God, I want to be exactly who you've called me to be. So you know what? Today's your perfect opportunity. First steps. Following the 11 a.m. service, I, I, or 10 a.m., yeah, 11 a.m. service, I know some of you are probably like, man, I have to come back. Yeah, go grab you some food or something and come back at around 12, 12 to 12.30. We're going to have first steps immediately following service. Plug into the kingdom of God. Get involved in what's going on. Serve 
and be a part of something. This is number three, brings me to number three. It's time to get on doing something greater than myself. It's time to be more than a church, church goer, and it's time to be a church beer. Now, that didn't make sense, did it? I know, when I wrote it in my notes, I was like, what? What are you saying? It's time to quit just going to church and sitting on a pew, but it's time to start being the church every single day of my life. If, if people were surveyed that you work with, what would their answers be? Are you godly? Are we actually treating people right? Are we kind to people? Are we loving to people? Are we showing people Jesus? Or are we just showing them the mood that I so happened to wake, woke up with this morning and you just get whatever I feel? See, a lot of us live in our feelings, but we got to start living in truth. The word, let the word of God be true in every man alive. My emotions lie to me. Just follow your heart. No, no, don't follow your heart. The Bible says it's increasingly wicked. Who can trust? You can't even know your heart. Your heart is, what are you talking about? Your feelings. My feelings will lead me all kinds of different different ways. My feelings would have led me to quitting a couple of times in this whole process, but thank God for the word so I could go get in it and remember that he that endureth to the end. I start realizing if I'll just hang in there, one day there's a prize for me at the end of this. I'm not living for this 70 anymore. I'm living for eternity. We got to st- quit worrying about what you're going to lose on this earth and start thinking about what you're going to gain in heaven. Come on. I don't, I don't care what you got to take away from me here. God, what do I get there? Galatians 6 says, if anyone th- thinks something is not, not, oh, I've, I've already, I apologize. Moving on. Ephesians 2 and 10 says, God creates each of us. This is a message, this is a paraphrase of this scripture again. He says, God creates each of us by Christ Jesus to join him in the work he does, the good work he has gotten ready for us to do. Work he had better, we had better be doing. 2 Corinthians 3, 17 through 18 says, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. See, a lot of us need freedom from something. We, we, we need to start being the church and being a free church when we're outside of these doors, uh, the Monday through Saturday. So there's freedom. He says, and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into His image with ever-increasing glory which has come from the Lord who is the Spirit. See, I can't go back and change the beginning, but I can start I can start where I am and change the ending. Is there somebody here who says, I haven't been doing the best maybe. There's been some things I haven't been doing, but I need to start getting after it and doing it. Is there anybody here today that says, you know what, maybe I need to lean in a little bit more. I need to shift gears and push a little harder. See, a lot of us are trying to conserve energy, spiritual energy. What are we conserving our energy for? The enemy is at the gate. And we're talking about, well, one day I'll get, I, I heard a guy talking about the other day, well, you know, things are getting crazy in the world, right? I can't say this in the second service because we'll be on video, but I'll say in this one. See, y'all, y'all are like, I'm going to start going to the first service. He's going to say some crazy stuff. I was listening to a guy I talked the other day, and he, he, he was probably about a good 100 pounds north of me. That's big, all right? And he was like, yeah, like, get it going. This thing's going to get crazy in this world. Just remember who's got all the guns. And I'm like, bro, we can't even run across the street without sucking wind. And y'all talking about having a civil war? Real talk. Like we, well, one day I'll get, what do you mean, Chris? Because a lot of people think they're ready for something they ain't ready for. See, and a lot of us think we're ready for a spiritual battle that we have not even trained for. It's time to start getting ready for it and acting like it's right now. And that's the truth. How, how, do, how do I prepare myself for that day? Start acting like it's right now. I wasn't raised in a world of, of, of well, right now we're going to lay back and, and, and I, I don't want to continue forward as a church as well. We're just, God will sustain it. No, no, no. We need revival and we need to quit acting like it's tomorrow. I don't know if you've noticed, but we've already, God has I asked people to raise their, I think we've grown on average attendance by over 100 people through this past year. God is moving. If God has moved in your life this year, can I hear you real quick in the room? If God has changed some things and revived some things in your life, can I hear you? I'm closing this morning. Listen, it's time to quit running away and start running toward. 
What do you mean? A lot of you, we're, we're trying to run away from our issues. And we're, we're, oh God, God, oh God, oh God, get it away from me. And it's not going anywhere. If it's not going anywhere, it's probably a good sign God's telling you to turn around and face the dadgum issue. Philippians 3, 13, as our musicians start getting ready. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, he says. He says, forgetting the past and looking toward what lies ahead. He said, I press. Look at your neighbor and say, press. I press. How? I get on my knees and I fast and I pray. I start getting in my word and I start paying attention. And only after that do I start prophesying. What do you mean? Speaking into situations and start speaking the truth of the word of God into situations. We got to humble ourselves for a while before we have the power to swing the sword. We need to, we need to, we need to do some spiritual push-ups for about 21 days. And then pull the sword out and go to work. Why? Because I want to press in. I want to press in. He says, forgetting the passing and forward to what lies ahead, I press on to reach the end of the race and receive the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling. As I got ready for this this morning, I was wondering, how am I going to close this? And, well, not this morning. I keep saying this morning, but this week. I saw a video this week as I was prepping, and it struck me. Something about it. It's like, oh, this is it right here. When cows sense that a storm's brewing, they oftentimes do what's completely natural. They run in the opposite direction. Trying to get away from it. The problem with this is the cows don't run very fast. Due to their less than stellar speed, storms often catch up to cows. And since cows don't know any better, they keep running in the same direction. Along with the storm. Maximizing their time spent in it and prolonging their pain and suffering. Before thinking about how ridiculous cows are, you might want to consider how often we humans do the exact same thing. But then there's the buffalo. The story centered around one of the most fascinating characteristics of the bison shows us how they react when a storm is coming. While cows... Their close relatives huddle together and run away from the storm. The bison, in all its strength and might, take the storm head on, charging directly into the path. Many times we find ourselves as the cow in this story trying with everything in us to put as much distance between us and whatever storms we see on the horizon. But by turning and running away, we only prolong our suffering and lengthen our exposure to the elements of the storm. Therefore, greatly increasing the suffering we endure. The mighty bison, though, he has it right. By charging into the storm, facing it head on, it limits the amount of time it takes to weather the storm and how quickly its ad adversity is overcome. And today as we stand up all over the room, I, I saw this video, and there's sound that goes with this. I don't know where the sound is, but I thought about this, this buffalo. I could hear the winds, and it made me think about the winds of the times we're in. The winds of the world, and the winds of changes that are taking place. And I thought, instead of running from it, what if like the buffalo, like he turns his face toward the snowstorm, with a snow-riddled face, he leans into it because he knows I can't get away from it. It's where I'm at. It's where God has me. So I'm going to lean into it. And I'm going to ask you, God, go ahead of me. Fight my battles. Use me in the middle of this. Do with me what you will. 
I'm going to quit trying to conserve strength from some day in the future that has not come yet. I'm going to start realizing that today is the day that the Lord has made. I will be glad. I will rejoice in it. I will be who you've called me to be. See, a lot of you have endured a lot of things over the years. And as our leaders come down, as we get ready to call into this altar this morning, a lot of you have endured things over the years. And what you don't realize is you're a lot stronger than you think you are emotionally. If you just step up to some things, and I know, I know this is going to sound bad, you're going to have to face some things that you have not wanted to face. You're going to have to face some struggles that you have not wanted to face. You're going to have to be honest with somebody and have a conversation about, somebody, about something that you haven't had with anyone before. It's time right now. Come on, look at your neighbor and say, it's time. Come on, look at your neighbor and tell them, it's time. It's time to be like the buffalo and lean into it and lean forward and charge. And what does it do? It's going to turn my strength and toughness that I've gained from all that faithfulness and perseverance and determination. A hundred-year-old church, a persevering church for a hundred years. I'm going to turn headlong into the storm and I'm going to charge into it. So today, what is the word for 2024? I really feel this word as you close your eyes all over the room this morning. It's time to turn and to charge the enemy. It's, it's time to quit waiting. It's time to move in. If there's anybody in this room with all eyes closed right now that feels me on that, you say, you know what, I know what you're saying. There's some, t- there's some things I'm sick of in my life right now, Chris. If you're that person, can we just lift both hands up to heaven? If you're that person, I'm just tired of some things.